Yo, how's it going? So I'm being forced to redo a video. I've had I've done uh, two Bitcoin videos the other day, Bitcoin Roadshow videos the other day that, that seemed to fail after after being downloaded. They they seem to work. I could play them on my phone, and um, I download them. And after downloading them, they become corrupted on my phone. So it's pretty strange. Um, now I'm an IT specialist of the past, so I'm not I'm I'm no longer in the nitty gritty of it. Um, we have a team of people working for that in the company in the UK that I work with, and also another co crypto company I work with called Private. So I don't have to be that guy anymore, learning all the technical stuff all the time, keeping abreast of it. So I am a little bit behind. So I don't want to create too many, um, let's say, conspiracy sounding things. But uh, this is just I'm gonna I'm gonna get into this whole topic now about about the slavery thing. The thing is my head's not really in the space. It's really annoying that I have to do this. I cannot stand and one thing I hate is inefficiency. Um, the way that I run every business I work for or every business that I've had in the past is maximum efficiency. I cannot stand doing things twice. Um, and if, if, if people get in the way of efficiency, they're just gone and it's not nothing personal. Just, just go away, you know. Um, to me, the biggest issues in this world, if you track them all down to root cause analysis of why America has problems, for example, it has problems because the country's inefficient and it's inefficient because it's feeding a parasite at the top or a bunch of parasites at the top, namely Raytheon, because uh, I will name them by, by, you know, by name rather than just saying military industrial complex, it is G4S that, um, that is controlling the prison systems. It is Raytheon, it is Lockheed Martin, which is just outside of where we used to live in Atlanta. Um, up near uh, Marietta. These are criminal corporations. Yeah, they, they, they create some jobs, but do they really create enough jobs that you should destroy the American dream for? I don't think so. Not just that, destroy the dreams of every other country that you're bombing. So when it comes to things like this, that I have to shoot a video twice because two different devices fail on me, and now I'm using a third one. This is a uh, couple of year old um, Samsung Edge, you know, when you get a fairly new, um, what's it called, a Note, um, Galaxy Note, and then these other these Galaxies here. Um, actually, this one's not a Galaxy, but anyway. You've got all these different phones to choose from. Give me a break. These things, they shouldn't fail so often. I've got a thing on the, um, and I, I will get into the topic. I just want to start with this. Uh, so this this laptop here, for example, uh, this is a, a pretty new, um, what do you call it? <laughs> Dell. Um, I decided to get a Dell with a Ryzen chip this time. I thought, you know, let me stay away from these um, mobile microwaves that cook your legs to pieces with these i7. Uh, sorry for the nerd talk here, but the i7 um, uh, Intel chipset, like this thing's got here. This is an i7. I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a Mac. It's a. What's it called the Microsoft Surface. Or well, this little thing here is going to turn into a. What do you call it? A. Uh, Actually, I'm going to turn both of these into into Linux machines. I'm just getting so annoyed with this. Yeah, as I say, I don't want to. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist. It's just that I am an IT specialist, and I have been working against you know cleansing my machine from crap all, all the time. And I do know that government spyware is impossible to detect. Um, I'm guessing written in a low-level language like C++ or even machine code. For all you know, you really don't know. Um, but most government spyware, where, wherever it's from, USA, um, you know, MI6 from the UK, wherever it means, Mossad in, in, in Israel, or even if it's the other side of the fence, you know, from the, the Iranians or whoever else, or the North Koreans, it's probably going to be stuff that's not going to be detected by any mainstream software that you can purchase or get for free. So there's no point buying anything, really. Um, I usually try to use multiple things. What I try to do usually is use a clean machine. As I explained to people on the Cryptoversity channel, on uh, the group on YouTube, uh, sorry, on on Facebook and on Minds. Actually, you not know, just on Facebook. This part is just on section. I think section two is on security. And it tells you how to clean your Mac and how to clean your your PC so you don't get uh, the, your your average Russian hacker uh, or or Russian hacker. God, listen to me. I'm like fucking Rachel Maddow here. Um, your average hacker from anywhere in the world who wants to steal your money. And they might appear to be Russian because of, that's how hackers work. Just to, to let you know, how, when, when, when hackers create programs, they will generally, uh, they will not just seed it from multiple source places or 
seemingly multiple sources or destinations, sorry, yeah, sources. They will also uh, write it in, in different languages and all sorts of stuff to give a lot of red herrings. Um, so most of the stuff that's written in the US um, to attack, for example, um, non-IT equipment, which is like your your you know, telemetry devices, that sort of stuff, the sort of things that were industrial equipment. So I used to work with a company in uh, Michigan. We had power stations of all sorts, except for nuclear. And uh, and then another job, we look after nuclear power stations, just the... Um, the uh, the IT equipment for that, so you, you do get a lot of attacks. You've got to use kind of high end industrial grade, well, I say industrial grade, is, you know, data center grade equipment such as um, uh, what's it called, coal, um, sky coal, or which is now called, geez, what's that called again now? Intellishun, I think it's called now. Um, your firepower devices from Cisco. You can't just rely rely on Cisco stuff because it's American produced. So you've really got to take in your equivalent. I think it's called U9000 from, from Huawei, but you've got to take your equivalent equipment in from many other companies if you really want to protect. And then you've got to take your honey trap devices in from companies like McAfee's Crowd. They, they do one called uh, Sentinel, a Sentinel device, which is basically allowing a hacker to come in to think they've got access to your systems to give you time to actually inspect what they're doing. It's a better way of doing it rather than just block, block, block. They're just, they're just you know, brute force attack or find a way in somehow. Anyway, that's cybersecurity stuff. And I'm not a specialist anymore, because um, because I'm I'm old school, um, and so which means defunct. It's like um, it's like a, a guy who knows how to build mud huts, and, and here you are in the age of the skyscrapers. That that's where I am, right? So um, no humility in saying it. <laughs> you know, I cut my teeth in the early days, um, back in the in the um, well, I suppose um, I learned in the 80s, and then um, got into it in the 90s. Anyway, so I do the best I can. And the best you can really do generally is a clean machine. I have one that's set aside. Don't load your Google profile. Don't load your, don't, don't put on. I would say that if you need to use a machine, you want to keep it uh, clean. Don't even use Chrome. Use, use a Chromium and don't sign into anything ever. Don't ever say, well, I'll make it easier to fill in passwords and stuff. Just forget it. It's not worth it. Because as soon as you do that, if you are marked, uh, like when I was, um, I was watching Australia years ago, and I know I was. I got, I got inside information because I was paying people to, to give me the information in Vodafone. And I found out I was being tagged by the cops. So, you know, you, when you find out this kind of information, you, 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 you kind of get a bit paranoid. But the, the simple reality is you're always going to be spied on just in different ways. Corporations and local police have a lot less access to things. They'll have stinger devices. They can, they can check your mobile phone. So one of the things that uh, some of the guys in my team at the moment were working on years ago was similar to Stinger devices where they would set up fake cell towers and all that sort of crap, you know what I mean? A lot of hacking devices out there, you just need to be aware of it. Anyway, I've been speaking for eight minutes now, damn it. Let me get onto this whole topic about slavery being a choice as it is, as I think it is anyway. So I'm going to carry on from the last video rather than repeat some of the things I said. I know that two thirds of it got cut off, which is really infuriating me because I need to <laughs> bring my head back into the space as well as try not miss anything out. So one of the things I mentioned in that video, which got cut off, <laughs> was that there was a Scottish guy and he had escaped from a... Uh, I'll need to get my mum to, to send me this magazine. that was, It's a Scottish magazine and it had this, this information that from... It was basically taken from a journal from a, from a, a guy in, in the 1700s. He was a Scottish guy, and he'd escaped. And the Lincoln, who is renowned for ending slavery, the propaganda will tell you, when in actual fact what he really did was compound slavery and keep it going for longer because he's the guy that signed you know, the order, the, the executive order to pay taxes towards companies that would return slaves to their slave masters, right? And this was quite a difficult thing to do in a day where um, it wasn't just black slaves, it was white slaves too. And by the way, I, I realize how inconvenient a truth this is for African Americans because I used to live in Atlanta, I used to live in Detroit. So I know that, um, happy wine day, <laughs> it's Saturday, um, and it's Bulgaria. Who's as cheap as chips? Uh, before I develop too much of an issue, I'm going to move on to a different country. <laughs> so anyway, forget that. Um, yes, 
inconvenient truth. Um, so the, the first slaves in America were Indian. Well, not Indian. Native American. Sorry, Native American. Don't want to get it wrong. But we all know what Indian means. Let's just, they should just call it Indian instead of Indian. Then we all, we all, there doesn't have to be that confusion between how, how, how derogatory a term to call us the race of another people, you know what I mean? When we're actually not. Or this Indian, that would just be the, the white man's term for, for that word. Uh, and as far as giving things new words, by the way, I lived in New Zealand, marriage like they call, um, you know, television, television. It's like, ah, bro, you speak funny, eh, bro? Bro, you call it a tele, a television. And it's like, yeah, no, but we invented it, you know, uh, John Logie Beard, you have to look it up. So we get to call it whatever the fuck we want to call it. And we're going to call it television and our Scottish accent, right? Same as a telephone, us as well. Cat's eyes on the road, or you know, tarmac, or rubber tires. So many inventions from Scotland. Very smart race. Uh, kind of like the Jews. I'm just not sure if the fake Jews are the smart ones and the real Jews are just smart, smarter than average people, you know what I mean? That's something I need to work out. Anyway, besides that, moving back on to the slavery thing. I do tend to digress quite a lot. I'm sorry, I've got to show you this little little son of mine. He's just so cute. Oh, yes. He's 14 years old now. Yes, he is. He's lived all over the world. He's a little schmoo. His name's Rumble. Anyway. Um, yeah, hang on. So... Uh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, the African-American situation, they get offended when you say this sort of stuff, but the truth is, the first slaves were Native Americans, right? And then closely followed by Scottish and Irish slaves, and possibly English as well, I'd say. Possibly even Welsh, who knows. Wherever there was a port, there was people who were accosted, effectively, to, um, to... You know, they wake up in chains after after a hard... Imagine that, getting completely shit-faced drunk and waking up next day. <coughs> ah, psh, ah, what's happening? <laughs> it's an oar hitting you in the face. <laughs> You're chained to it. <laughs> it must have been horrible, you know. I, I laugh about it, but I mean, it must have been shit. Like, like oh, typical. <laughs> this always happens when I'm drunk. Anyway, this guy got returned. I oh, not returned. He, he returned... Well, he, he broke free, and I know that he got back to Scotland. I'm just not sure, and I need to get my mum to send me the, the article again. Uh, it's just that trying to get mums to use things like mobile phones to take a picture. Son, can, can you see? Son, can you see what's going on? I can, and she's got her face here. <laughs> it's just terrible, you know what I mean? It's, it's really painful speaking to my mum about technology and trying to get her, even getting her a Facebook account 10 years ago. Was, it was a nightmare. Now, now she lives on this shit. But she's still not good at it. She's still trying to copy and paste and do things that are simple and do a bad job at it. Anyway, the guy made his way back to Scotland eventually. Not sure if it was the first time he got returned, but he was a slave twice effectively, right? And um, and the thing that, that was worse, they were the canaries in the coal mine. They were they were so they were like one tenth the value. A paddy and a jock, because they tend to be skinny alcoholics, were about one tenth the value of a negro, right? Negroid. Uh, I do this a lot, I I move into different topics, but anyway, you've got your Negroids, Mongoloids, and all, the, all these, you know, your, your main main tribes, if you like, so there's no point calling me Hispanic, Slavic, Celt, because I am, I'm mixed race, but, um, you know, uh, Caucasian, right, simple as that, you know, I, I, the only reason I say Hispanic, Slavic, Celt sometimes is, is to really, is to take the piss out of um, social justice warriors, um, who I can't stand because I'm a liberal, and they've just destroyed the whole cause of liberalism. Um, I'm obviously part libertarian too and an anarchist as well, but um, you know, first and foremost, I'm, I'm a liberal person. Live and let live. Uh, which is libertarian, which is liberalism spawned from that anyway, right? Not a lot of people know that. Anyway, so this slave thing. We are all living as slaves right now. Even me, I've broken free from the system pretty well. Um, I don't live in the monetary system. Oh, I do. Hmm. Okay, I still kind of live in the monetary system. I do have... I had a lot of bank accounts around the world, right? And I've reduced that down. Moving to America made me get a little bit paranoid about having uh, property, capital in other countries because they want to tax you on every little thing you have, right? And they also want to design a prison sentence for you for just trying to continue on life like a normal person. So, for example, cryptocurrency I bought 2011, 2012, 2013... Um, 
and they would try to seize that asset even though they had nothing to do with the purchase of it because I lived in the UK when I bought it, right? New Zealand and the UK when I bought it. So what claim do they have when they're a country that goes against it, but yet they want to take capital gains while restricting the growth of crypto through their legislation, through their through their lack of making a a cohesive decision to say, right, we're gonna this is gonna be our stance on crypto. They've been so wishy washy over the years. I've been on Coinbase, I've been on I've been on Gemini and Luno and all sorts of stuff. I can I can't get on any of these platforms anymore because the KYC's got so difficult. Now I ask me for SMS messages. I could call someone else up and say, hey, when the code comes through on SMS, tell me what it is. I can't be bothered. I don't see why I should have to. I don't need to own more crypto. I just like to buy more because well, I'm a typical human being. I'm a greedy bastard. I'm not serious when I say that. I don't need more. When I get more money, the the things I will spend it on in the future are things that need to be done. You know what I mean? I don't need more myself. I can actually survive the way I've done. I've sold out a little bit of Ethereum that I bought in 2015 and... Uh, I sold out a tiny bit of Litecoin, and that's all I actually plan to do. Litecoin, Ethereum, I'll sell, sell it out. I still trade between different things, Chainlink and all sorts of stuff. Guy was mentioning that the other day who's on my channel. So um, I will probably buy back into Ethereum again because the... I, damn, I'm moving into, into Bitcoin roadshow stuff, and I shouldn't do that. Right, okay, back to slavery. The slaves that are living in the system, earning, uh, earning hyperinflated currency, because that's what it is. You've got quantity of easing. Uh, banks and the central banks can print what they want. Um, governments are effectively allowing a situation where you have stock buybacks, which is falsification. It's it's um, oh, everything's going on front running and everything. It's just it's insane what's going on right now in the financial world. And anyone who actually has a financial degree, an economic degree, this has surprised me quite a lot. One of the guys who works for us, um, uh, American Jewish guy, um, he's. Um, Kind of got annoyed at me because I said he was brainwashed, and I, didn't, I meant that in the nicest, most possible way. <laughs> I, don't, I don't pull any punches, but the issue was that uh, he he said he had an economics degree and all sorts of stuff, and I'm like, but how can you think such a way as you do right now? And that is the falling into line way that, you know, you must be crazy. You must be wearing a tinfoil hat if you think X, Y, Z. You know. The simple fact is that everything's a theory, as I said to another guy I met last night. Hey, Steve, how you going? Uh, if you see my, I can't remember if I told you about my channel, but anyway, um, English guy trying to escape the bullshit. Um, he's gone down the rabbit hole a little bit. I will, I will say, I'm, I, 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 you know, I told him last night straight up. You know, everything is as Matt from Quantum of Conscience, one of the best channels on YouTube, by the way, as he explains. Pissed on breadcrumbs. We can we can latch onto some of these things a little bit too long. Give them more credibility than they deserve. Uh, some of these theories. We need to remember that everything is a theory. You don't know if it's not simulation. You don't know if it's not flat earth or concave earth or round earth. None of them are proven. And I would say that there's more proof behind the, the spherical earth than any other ones. But it's not bulletproof. None of it is. And that's why I'm not going to say, yeah, that's definitely true. And you're an idiot if you do. You are just the same kind of puppet as anyone else. You're... There's a difference between waking yourself up and being susceptible to something because it's against the narrative, right? Because something can be against narrative, but be a whole new narrative, right? And one of those narratives is that slavery <laughs> was something that was imposed upon people. And you think, that's a lot of people. You could have stood together and you could have... If you had enough collective intelligence and the willpower to do it, you could have stood up against you being African Americans, could have, well, Africans as they were at the time living in America, <laughs> you could have stood up against the system. You might have got slaughtered, yeah. It wouldn't have made much sense, but you might have got slaughtered. Uh, and then where would you be today? Well, probably all these children wouldn't be born. And that, that's, a, that's a difficult decision to make. It's like, well, they say, it's, it's, like look at my country in Scotland, right? We have been literally ruled by England for 320 years, or around about there. We, we didn't have any democratic decision to enter uh, the United Kingdom, and still haven't to this day. And this is why I say what we should be doing is rather than inviting a second rigorendum for the English aristocracy who pose as a government to, um, 
you know, to, 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 to make us pretend we actually have a fucking choice when we don't. What we should do is declare. So Nicola Sturgeon, if you're listening, no, she's not, of course she isn't. We should declare independence. So back in 2014, I was, a, I was a member of the SNP and a member of the Greens Party and then found out later on I couldn't be a member of both. Wow, well, well you know what? Because I'll be a member of the Greens then. If, if they allow me to be a member of both, I'll be a member of them. Even, even being a member of one, I'll be a member of them. And I still put money into both. Same as I put money into the Bernie Sanders campaign, even though I don't believe in him anymore, because he has been got to. Mark on face, immediately after, starts squealing that Hillary Clinton is fine to vote for. Give me a bloody break, right? That's when I was living in the States. Um, so in Scotland... We are subservient, a subservient race of people or a sub race of people, what do you even call it? Um, and you have to be an absolute moron if you cannot see, based on the fact that Norway is right over the sea from us, had three and a half million people when we had 5.2, and now I think they have f almost 5 million, and we've got 5.8. So we've gone up a minuscule percentage. And that minuscule percentage, by the way, is most is, is completely made up of. Um, we've actually depopulated as far as Scottish is concerned. Real Scottish people like people like me who were born here, my parents were born here. We've depopulated, right? And we've brought in a lot of migrants. But the good thing is the migrants that are in Scotland, even second generation, I was uh, first first generation, second generation, who are from India, Pakistan. They're not the sort of ones you get down in Bradford who want to sit there and bring in Sharia law. They're actually proud to be Scottish. And this really goes against the narrative of, of, the, of the, um, the English uh, aristocracy that ruled their country uh, uh, by the government that England vote in for us to be ruled by, right? Because that's the reality of Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, is we are ruled by the choice of the English voter. So they don't even have to give us propaganda. They just have to propagandize the population of subservient idiots in their own country as opposed to subservient idiots in our country, right? Uh, which is, there, there's just as many. I've got nothing against English people. I want to compound that in every video that I mention this sort of stuff. I've got family in England, right? I love England. I love the West Coast. I've lived in London for years. It's a shithole now, but I mean, I've lived in London for years, eight years, I think, total. So, the UK are not citizens. They are subjects, right? That's slavery right there. You don't have freedom in America or the UK. You are a slave. You're a slave to taxes. New Zealand, Australia, same thing. Almost all of the world, same thing. Some of the guys that work for us over in private, um, some of the development team we have, um, well, besides America and other countries, England and stuff, we have um, guys over in Vietnam. And they are... Okay, I mentioned about giving these guys crypto. I, I, I like the... When someone's very honest and open, I like that. But they, they said they didn't want to accept it because it was against the law in their country. They don't want. They don't. They don't want to. They don't want to put themselves on the line. And I, and I understand that. You know, our governments are bad enough. Um, the governments might not be as good at finding out things, but they might be worse once they do find out. You know, because we all live in totalitarian countries. We need to learn this. It's not just. There is no enemy countries out there. All there is is enemy governments against the people. We don't need them. Technology that we have is what we need to unenslave us. So when Kanye West says something like slavery was a choice and you ask yourself, was he right? I say, of course he's right. The problem is that it might have been a choice between death and dishonor, you know? Um, that's in a movie from the 80s, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> anyway, so it might have been a choice between death and dishonor. So you could have said, right, F you, I'm not going to work. You're going to get beaten to with an inch of your life. And you're going to get beaten to a pulp. Probably killed. Or you go back and be a slave. It is a choice. Unfortunately, the choice isn't very, very good. One of the things Amer Af African Americans should have done is effectively asked around them. Now, I, I know I'm, I'm fairly... Stop it, Rumble. Come on. I'm fairly, um, what's the word? Yeah, I've been drinking a little bit, so 
I, I, was, I didn't know whether to shoot this today or not. Um, resourceful. I would have probably found a way to unlock the knowledge of, um, you know, there's no internet back then. There's no, there's no books that you got access to. You're a nigger. You can't, you can't do, you can't learn this sort of stuff. I can imagine what it'd be like. It'd be horrible, right? My heart goes out to that sort of thing. It's just, it's disgusting. And I can imagine it happening in the future because it's going to happen in the future. If you really think all these control mechanisms that are getting put in place aren't going to enslave you in the future, you are an idiote. Um, so, basically, yes, it was a choice. That's all you can see is it was a choice. Not a very good choice. Still a choice. So he got he got uh, lambasted by the media and and a lot of um, chicken head African American girls said, "Oh no, you did that." Mm -hmm. Talk about some of the worst people in the world um, to ever be around um, is, is big fat African mamas. Um, not in Africa, that they're, they're not so bad, but in, over in um, in America, jeez. Uh, and, and again, not in Detroit. A lot of the, a lot of the African American women in Detroit were actually quite slim and good. But the ones down south, oh man, the Bible Belt. Mm -hmm. They're just so indoctrinated by the system; it's insane. And they don't realize that the worst enemy, and Tommy Sotomayor will explain this: the worst enemy to the black man in America is the black woman. And if you live there and you really, you, you see what's going on, you will see what he's saying is exactly right. Everything from the I'm empowered, look at me, I'm a shh. They always say strong. They don't say strong. I'm a strong, independent black woman raising my, my, my kid because I wasn't, my, you know, I, I wasn't, what's the word? I didn't, have, I didn't have the mental fortitude to just keep my legs closed a little bit longer and actually plan the, the, the child I wanted to bring into the world. No, we all have to have unplanned children. We all have to be a loud mouth bitch to our guys. You know, and especially guys who, who might have been brought up in a certain way to be emotionally fragile. And you recognizing that in them, and yet you still try and emasculate them and wonder why they punch you in the face. And then they get sent to jail, and they can't pay their child support. And so the, the whole thing is a... Man, if you can see how clearly I see it from a social engineering point of view, you'll understand that you're an absolute... What's it called? Useful idiot. If you're one of those women... Now, I've tried to get trapped a couple of times by African-American women, and uh, one of them who's a rapist, um, Maya Marie Forbes, who's a lawyer in, in Detroit. Um, yeah, fuck you, you rapist. Anyway, um, and also one of her friends who I went out with for a while, um, Bronzetta Jones, um, absolute honey, but the problem is she had golden pussy syndrome because she knew how good she looked, right? And she's part Chinese and everything as well. It wasn't just straight African American. And the thing is, I've seen a thing by not Earthling Carl. What's his name again? There is a uh, there is a YouTuber, a fairly new one, the Jolly Heretic. That's it. Watch that channel. It's quite interesting. He explains about people like me who are mixed race because I've got a few in me, and it probably does make us susceptible to being not mentally stable. So I, cause I think I fire off and I get aggressive probably more than I should. Anyway, slavery thing. Um, my country is full, filled with slaves. The fact that we cannot even have a democratic referendum, well, a partially democratic referendum, <laughs> if you don't count the American, uh, sorry, the, um, the BBC and other propaganda from around the world that tells us that we're not, like Obama who came on our TV and said to us, and I quote, word for word, Obama says, um, Scotland. Independence is not the right time. Okay, that's how he did it. <clears throat> and regarding independence, Scotland, it's, it's not the right time. That's what he said. And we had to listen to that on BBC Scotland. Not BBC, BBC Scotland. It got erased from the media. You cannot find that clip anywhere. And I, and I, and I would just say, if, if you were to... Because it's kind of a government company, isn't it, BBC? Um, if you were to do a freedom of, information, freedom of information request, you would not find that clip. That would be erased. It's a good reason why it was removed from the internet. Because it was there. It's gone now. The only one that's available now is when he's spoken in England 
and basically said they want to keep out of it, which I couldn't believe. I thought, I can't believe this is days after he said that, and now he's saying this, and it's all gone. By the way, if there's anyone from Scotland out there who ever watches this in the future, because I'm a especially on YouTube, not so much on BitTube or, or BitChute, which I might upload it to because it's so much effort and same as DTube. Um, if you have, if there's anyone out there that's got a copy of that, God, I'd just love to have it because I've been told that it doesn't exist. I've been told that I'm, I'm going crazy, uh, but I know what I saw. Um, I, I saw propaganda when I was younger, so we're talking about slavery in South Africa. I lived in Johannesburg for, for four years. And I said to my dad years ago, was, I was watching Mnet, and, I, and I'd hacked a decoder, so we only had one channel, so I'd, I'd, I'd hacked a decoder, I was about 13, 12 years old at the time, maybe 13, and to get us BBC World, which I thought was like, wow, we've got foreign news channel, yeah, yeah, stuff, this Dutchman stuff, right? So I get this, this uh, BBC World, and I'm in Johannesburg, next to the J.D. Stridham Tower, which is the biggest tower there, it's, it's, they call it the Hillbrow Tower. We lived right in, in the city there. And uh, and they're showing. And today in Johannesburg, here we are. People like Nick Robinson, who's an absolute shill, showing us what's going on in the world. Apparently, the camera facing down, as it always does, on BBC or even Sky News or CNN or it used to be Fox, but they're they're getting a little bit more truthful now, especially with uh, what's his face, Tucker Carlson. And that the camera's facing down, so everything's propaganda. Here's a group of, oh, look at all these people here. There's 12 of them in a circle. If you actually, if you zoom out, which RT did once to Al Jazeera, they, they took a video of BBC and Al Jazeera and showed what they were showing. It was a crowd of people huddled together <laughs> to make it look like a crowd, and the camera's facing down. This is the propaganda world we live in. And until you see this, the fact that the Russians, who are no saints themselves, the fact that they have a government channel which is showing us the truth about our country, not, not propaganda, just the truth. It shows us how far gone we are. They don't even have to produce propaganda anymore. All they have to do is show us the truth about what our, our, our own assholes are doing, because they have their assholes. They only have to show us the truth. And this is why they allow Max Kaiser on their channel. This is why France 24 and BBC doesn't allow them, or Al Jazeera for that matter. Because they're, you know, what are Al Jazeera going to do? You got Qatar, you got you got UAE, and these countries. They'll do anything Saudi says because, well, especially in the case of Dubai, they've got no money of their own. They haven't got no oil left. Qatar, they've got money left, but I mean that's not going to last forever. And the thing is, they're not going to stand up against the, 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 the um, you know, the misogynist culture of of Saudi Arabia, the misogynist. What's it called? Uh, uh, kleptocracy and um, hedge, hedge, mm, what's it called again? A monarchy of Saudi Arabia. I'm not going to stand up against that. Not when it's got America's back. Not when, not when Israel's got its back. You know, it's the, it's, the, it's the axis of evil right there. You know, England, America, Saudi Arabia, and Israel. It, 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 it's nothing against Jewish people because lots of Jews don't like Zionism. There was many real Jews living in Palestine before it got, you know, uh, well, invaded. No, no, a lot of it was bought, a lot of it per was purchased, right? But now what you have is people who are willfully enslaving themselves into a new system of, oh, we need to watch ourselves because we've got all these people who want to kill us, we've got people who want to put rockets. Why would they want to do that? Why would they want to just continually do Oh, is it because you came back 3,000 years later and want to have a country? Now, I'm from Scotland. We've had our country overtaken for 320 years by a foreign government, England, who pretends to be called the UK. It's England. And it's not even all of England. It's an area called Westminster and the City of London, who are a holy un an unholy union of um, of... You know, David Icke would call them lizard people. I don't know, because that's what it is. They, they, the, the people of England are their victims. The people of Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, and Ireland, and every other country around the world that they have old money interests in are their victims, right? They are all slaves. And if you don't believe this, you are a prime slave. You are like the pinnacle of slavery. 
you are the one they want. Like, yay! This is the kind of, you know, um, cookie cutter we want. <laughs> so what I've done right now is I've broken myself away from that somewhat. I still am a slave. Um, I won't deny that. Because why? Because when I, when I buy cash, when I, when I buy um, gas at the uh, tank, even here in Bulgaria, I have to pay tax. Why am I paying tax? Who for? For this administration who I know is corrupt. And a few years ago in Bulgaria, they found $1.5 billion. They didn't find it, they took it. They stole it. They took it from the, the Bulgarian mafia. Um, who, of course, you know, it could be everything from child porn to everything else that, 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 that went into making that money. And that money, you could say, well, if you were to take it from a governmental point of view, should belong to the Bulgarian people. Does it? No. Where is it now? Gone. They'll never get it back. By the time people even have the gumption and balls to ask for that, by the way, lots of Bulgarian reporters have been silenced by even asking this question. So by doing so right now and being here, I'm probably getting myself a little bit in trouble. Uh, they'll probably design a charge for me. Um, anyway, doesn't matter. 1.5 billion in Bitcoin a while ago, and I don't know exactly when it was, so it could have gone down in value from now. But if you can imagine what the value that will have when Bitcoin reaches a million, as it will reach a million, all right? Bulgaria will be the richest country in the world. As I told the SNP back in 2014, when the UK government were, were, they had been ordered not to falsify information about the currency lie, it's known as the currency lie, where they said to us, if you become independent, what currency you will use? You can't use the pound, even though the pound was invented by a Scotsman, right, who started the Bank of England, right? You can't use the pound. What I said to them years ago is, don't even engage. Take Scotland out of the pound. If you, any monetary control that you have, which is very limited being the SNP, because it's more than in England, but you take that monetary control and you say that we're going to move our money to Bitcoin. Could you imagine back when Bitcoin was between 100 and 600 uh, dollars? What that could have done for Scotland even now, that it's at 12,000 I think right now. We would, like Bulgaria, had the opportunity to be without corruption. We would, without government, the point. See, even, even without government, let's say that money stayed in the hands of the, the Bulgarian Mafia. That money would have gone around the Bulgarian community. And Bulgaria still would have been extremely rich because of it. People don't understand this. Government is nothing but a hindrance. Now, they do, uh, people might argue, oh, they stop crackheads breaking into your house. They stop this and that. Well, they actually create these things in the first place. So when a crackhead, let's say, for example, in a, in a fully anarchistic world, a crackhead becomes a crackhead starts breaking into your window, bang, shoot your head off. You'll quickly learn not to break into someone's house, won't you? But in this world, bang, same thing happens. Blow his head off, you're in jail. Which makes you think, maybe I shouldn't do that. These law of averages that balance each other out in a natural way, they don't get to happen because of government. And the reason why that is because government laws are designed for one purpose. Back in the days of Julius Caesar, was to let his friends off from raping and from prima nocte, from all sorts of sort of stuff, sorts of things that used to happen back in those days. So when you had the mob try to kill someone because this rich ponce raped my daughter, the law was there to make sure that they made they profited from the conflict. Step one, that could be. And you know, it changed to the Pope. It could be, it could be anyone. It could be, it could be the King, the Queen, the Pope, the Emperor, whoever's in charge, whoever's taking control of your country. It could be them, right? The fact is, they're profiting from your misery, from your suffering, and they're pretending to be your friend and are not. Because you'd go out and kill them. Granted, you might be killed because they're richer than you and they get more people. But eventually, what happens is a balancing act. Because the simple fact is this: the people who are C U N T S. Right? Those people are actually a minority. So some people you would give yourself as cannon fodder, but eventually society would level and you would get back to what it was before. The reason why we have so much skullduggery and lying is because we reward being a scumbag. We have done it for a long time. Many generations have done this. Since, since anarchistic days and societies that have existed for about 5,000 years under anarchistic society, since we moved into uh, Plato's time, 
for um, you know in ancient Greece and all that for democracy we've seen nothing but corruption the whole way through and the slave system as Stephen Molyneux rightly points out has malformed from uh, you know your surname is this you're a blacksmith blah 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 oh let's give them the illusion of freedom now so then you move into a new system you have the church system then you move into the the, the modern government system where you get to choose your job you're still a slave you'll never become the elite as George Carlin says it's all a big club and you ain't in it right so when you understand all this sort of stuff you see that we all we've done is trade one form of slavery for another and not to downplay uh, complete indentured servitude or, or, or full-on slavery, which is where you have zero rights whatsoever. Um, it's just different levels of slavery, right? And they're all a choice. And we are, just so you understand, this is the kind of point of this video. I'm getting to it now after, what is it, damn, 41 minutes. I'm sorry about this, guys. The whole point of this is what I'm saying is that we are living in a time like no other where even though things are getting difficult, things are getting controlled, you've got um, 4G, 5G technology out that is surveilling you all the time, right? And 3G was as well. And all your smartphones and all your computers and all the, you know, the spyware that's coming out, most of it's not even, you know, it's not even these, these mafia gangs and everything. It's mostly government who are spying on you. That's just the reality of it. John McAfee will tell you that one, even when he's going a little bit doolally, I think, with his um, ego trip that he seems to be on lately, which I don't like. I used to like that guy. I still do like him, but it just kind of annoyed me how he's, his narrative has kind of changed into, I don't know. It's something you notice of people when they're, when they're, when the way they speak starts to seem more about, hmm, look at me, you know what I mean? I don't like that. Oh, humble John. Anyway. We're living in the f one of the freest times you could ever live in. Now, of course, you could live free years ago. There's different. There was different methods of being free, but where we are right now, you can be free and have a lot behind you. You can be free and have technology that benefits you, not technology that sits there spies on you. I'm talking about uh, graphene and all sorts of stuff. You know, I, I want to buy. I just say today, I want to build next time. I want to uh, instead of doing another V8 or another fast forward turbo car because my hobby is doing up cars and stuff. I want to do um, a bus like the bus I've done, uh, you've seen on the other videos. But I want to do it in graphene, graphene fiber, something like that, uh, carbon fiber, uh, with uh, solar power all around it, grunty as hell electric motors. Um, something that I can be completely free. I'd actually like to make an amphibious vehicle, it would be really, really cool if I could do that. But, I, but I'm thinking the better idea is later on is to lead by example and show people that you can do a sea base that can submerge under the waves. I've said this one before as well. Airship comes in, plants itself, storms come, submerge, bring yourself under level that ships can come and hit you and then resubmerge again. Because the only way you're going to probably get sovereignty in the future is to be in international open waters and you will have to be armed. So we're going to have to start, unfortunately, Unless we can develop defensive weapons that can neutralize the weapons of the terrorists, which is America, U UK, Israel, even Iran, and everything. In fact, every country, they're all terrorists, right? All the governments are terrorists. They're the, they're the real terrorists. We're the people. They're the terrorists. And if you can't create defensive technology, then you will have to create some kind of attack technology to make sure they know it's, it's the same situation, the stalemate they have with the, uh, the Cold War, mutually assured destruction. It needs to be that kind of level. Unfortunately, that's what you have to get down to. Until you can escape the planet, and this is the thing, when it comes to religious fanatics, and it comes to the, and religious fanatics, I mean some of these politicians as well, that, that it's not just about Christianity and, Muslim, and Islam and everything. I'm talking about their religion is control, right? And when it comes to that, just the thought that you're existing in a faraway galaxy that you came from here, they feel that they own you and they have to rein you in. That's the mindset of these psychopaths, right? So you need to be free from this. So at this stage, we haven't got off the planet yet. Not the main, not the layman anyway. Uh, we can quite easily. Okay, if you were to believe that the moon landing was correct, right? 
here's, here's uh, an enslavement uh, 303 level, right? If you were to believe that uh, we really went to the moon, or that you were a and even got to space, right? Then, you're talking about things that are, this laptop here had the power of every single space mission. Not just that. Mm, okay, so it's, it's a, a dual core, 3.7 gigahertz. God, the graphics chip in this, <laughs> the rate, this radon graphics chip it's got, that has more compute power than all of the space missions from, from the 1940s, or 1950s, all the way through to the 1970s. Actually, probably 1980s as well. Just that one graphics card on this laptop. And you're telling me that it should be that difficult not to take, let's say, oh, well, okay, there's a million dollars for the Ru old Russian, what they called again, uh, N, N, uh, not coming to me. I think N1 rockets had these N14, I think, N NS14 rockets in them. They perfected at the very end just before they gave up the space program. Well, you can buy them for a million dollars each. And the Americans did, because that was actually superior technology uh, by the end when they, when they finished. Uh, uh, they were basically small rockets as opposed to the large rockets the Americans make. And you could buy them and you could get yourself to space. Okay, what are you going to do when you get there? Not very much. You could at least prove that space travel might even exist. You could at least prove, let's say all these millionaires that believe in flat earth theory, come on, you tell me you can't get together and raise, in my estimation with a project manager like me on board, 